The Duke of Edinburgh presides over the 2024 Anzac Day commemorations in London. The King and Queen of Thailand meet with the Prime Minister of Bangladesh in Bangkok. Queen Maxima of the Netherlands opens a beautiful mess restaurant in Amsterdam. And the Royal Court of Denmark releases new gala portraits of the King and Queen of Denmark. All this and much more coming up next on your Royal Daily News. Hello, everyone. I hope you all are having a wonderful day today. If you're new to my channel, my name is Alexandra, and welcome to your Royal Daily News for Thursday, April 25th, 2024. In Copenhagen, the Royal Court of Denmark released the first official gala portraits of their majesties, King Frederick X and Queen Mary of Denmark, since the king's accession to the throne on January 14th, 2024. The portraits were taken in the green room in the royal reception rooms at Christiansborg Schlott in Copenhagen by longtime court photographer, Mr. Steen Ebold. The new portraits will be on display in government buildings, Danish embassies and consulates worldwide, and on Danish vessels. According to the Royal Court of Denmark, in the portraits, the king is wearing his full naval uniform with the Order of the Elephant on a chain, the Order of the Elephant's Breast Star from around 1770, and the Breast Star of the Order of Denimbroek, which was made for Frederick VI after the change of the Order's rules in 1808. Upon his accession to the throne, King Frederick X was appointed to the rank of Admiral, and the full dress of uniform is therefore fitted with four stars on the shoulder insignia. Around the neck, the king is wearing the Grand Commander Cross, which is the Order of Dannenberg's highest rank. The naval officer saber, which the king wears with the uniform once belonged to King Frederick IX and was given to the king by Queen Ingrid in connection with the king's appointment to the rank of Lieutenant Commander of the Navy Reserve in 1997. Her Majesty, Queen Mary of Denmark, is wearing the crown jewels for the first time. The emerald set with a tiara, necklace, earrings, and a large brooch can be divided into three parts. Per the Royal Court of Denmark, quote, the set was designed by jeweler C.M. Weisthaupt and was a gift from Christian VIII to Queen Caroline Amelie, probably for their silver wedding anniversary on 22nd May, 1840. The set's emeralds and diamonds are partly reused items from the jewelry collection of Christian VI, Queen Sophie Magdalene, partly reused items from older bracelets combined with newly purchased stones. The style consists of neoclassical forms, inspired by the French crown jewels of the time. When the crown jewels are not in use, they are on display in the treasury, in the secured basement, under Rosenborg Schlott. It is customary that the crown jewels remain in Denmark, which means they are not taken along on visits abroad. The Danish crown jewels are the only ones in the world that are both exhibited as museum objects and, at the same time, worn by the country's queen. End quote. On her chest, the queen is wearing a diamond miniature portrait of the king in a bow of the Order of Dannenberg ribbon. Upon the king's accession to the throne, the queen received a miniature portrait of the king. The portrait was created by British artist Mr. Tom Mulliner and is set in a gold frame with brilliant diamonds. In Oslo, His Majesty King Harald V of Norway received letters of credence from newly appointed ambassadors to the Kingdom of Norway at the Royal Palace. The newly appointed ambassadors are from the Kingdom of Sweden, the Republic of Costa Rica, and the Argentine Republic. Each new ambassador accredited to the Kingdom of Norway presents his or her letters of credence to the sovereign. The Letters of Credence is an official document from a foreign head of state informing the sovereign that he or she has recently appointed the new ambassador as the official representative of his or her country in the Kingdom of Norway. Upon receiving the Letters of Credence formalizes his or her entry into office in the Kingdom of Norway. Meanwhile, his Royal Highness, Crown Prince Haakon of Norway, attended a commemoration ceremony on the occasion of the 50th anniversary 
of the future in our hands. In Stockholm, the Royal Court of Sweden announced that Her Royal Highness, Crown Princess Victoria of Sweden, will begin special officer training within the Swedish Armed Forces in the fall of 2024. As the future head of state, Queen of Sweden, the purpose of the Crown Princess's special officer training is for her to gain a deeper understanding of military tactics, strategy, and science. The Royal Court also confirms that the Crown Princess has now, quote, started at the National Defense Academy and in the Armed Forces, contains both theoretical and practical training elements, end quote. Meanwhile, their Royal Highnesses, Crown Princess Victoria and Prince Daniel of Sweden held audiences at the Royal Palace. In the morning, the Crown Princess couple held an audience with the chairman of the Social Democrats, Ms. Magdalena Anderson. Thereafter, the Crown Princess couple held an audience with the chairman of the Sweden Democrats, Mr. Jimmy Okusen. This was followed by a meeting with the Deputy Prime Minister of Sweden, Ms. Ebba Bush. In Brussels, Her Majesty Queen Mathilde of the Belgians, in her capacity as an advocate of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, attended the symposium entitled Experiences and Perspectives on Nutritional Labeling Systems on Packaging, held at the Residence Palace. Organized by the Belgian Presidency of the Council of the European Union, the symposium gathered experts, policymakers, stakeholders, as well as researchers from across Europe to discuss the prospects of NutraScore and other voluntary nutritional labeling systems on the front of packaging to encourage customers to adopt balanced habits. Meanwhile, in Ghent, His Majesty King Philippe of the Belgians participated in the Great Debate 2024, organized as a part of Ghent, European Youth Capital 2024. The Great Debate aims to raise awareness among young people aged 16 to 18 about local and European elections, democracy, and citizenship. According to the Royal Court of Belgium, 750 students from Ghent have been preparing for the Great Debate since October 2023. Quote, The students learn to form an opinion, to present their ideas, and to argue on subjects that concern them. The different classes and schools meet on April 25th to debate six themes, climate, well-being, the city of the future, money, democracy, and living together. Their conclusions will be submitted to political decision makers at the end of the day during a major final debate. End quote. During today's event, the King participated in several debate tables between students as well as met with 10 students who spoke about their aspirations and their visions for the future. In Amsterdam, Her Majesty Queen Maxima of the Netherlands presided over the opening of the new location of the social restaurant and event space, A Beautiful Mess. According to RVD, the A Beautiful Mess restaurants are, in quote, initiative of Refugee Company, a foundation that supports newcomers in the Netherlands to gain work experience and offer perspective to help people integrate and find paid work. A Beautiful Mess wants to be a place where worlds that normally do not meet come together, end quote. In Den Haag, His Majesty King Willem-Alexander of the Netherlands held a meeting with the new president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Mr. Bola Tinubu, at Palace House Tembosch. In the afternoon, Her Majesty the Queen, in her capacity as the United Nations Secretary General's Special Advocate for Inclusive Finance for Development, held a meeting with the president. According to RVD, the discussion focused on the, quote, Progress of Financial Inclusion in Nigeria. In 2017, Her Majesty visited the country as the UNSGSA. End quote. 
In the evening, their majesties hosted a dinner in honor of the president's visit to the Kingdom of the Netherlands. In Luxembourg City, His Royal Highness, Grand Duke Henri of Luxembourg, received letters of credence from newly appointed ambassadors to the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg at the Palais Grand Ducal. The newly appointed ambassadors are from the Islamic Republic of Iran, the Republic of the Seychelles, the Republic of Equatorial Guinea, and the Republic of India. In Bangkok, their Majesties, King Rama X and Queen Sothada of Thailand, held an audience with the Prime Minister of the People's Republic of Bangladesh, Shaika Hasina, inside the Throne Hall at Dusset Palace. Meanwhile, it was announced that their Imperial Majesties, Emperor Norihito and Empress Moscow of Japan, will carry out a two-day visit to the Okayama Prefecture beginning on May 25th, 2024. The schedule for the visit includes a meeting with students from the Okayama Technical School, a visit to a national drawing competition at the Okayama Convention Center, and the opening of the 74th National Tree Planting Festival at the Zip Arena Okayama. In Santander, His Majesty King Felipe VI of Spain presided over the presentation of the Premio Princesa de Girona Investigación 2024 during the Princesa de Girona Congress Fest during the fourth stage of the Tour del Talento. The winner of the award went to evolutionary ecologist, plant biologist, and geneticist, Professor Moises Alonso. Professor Alonso is currently a researcher and professor of change biology at UC Berkeley and the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. Their Serene Highnesses, Prince Albert II and Princess Charlene of Monaco, accompanied by His Serene Highness, Hereditary Prince Jacques of Monaco, and Her Serene Highness, Princess Gabriella of Monaco, presided over the opening of the new Monaco section of the Miniatur Wunderland in Hamburg. According to a press release from Miniatur Wunderland, the 36 square meter Monaco section is the quote, 12th themed, and it cost over 5 million euros to construct. End quote. That's actually kind of cool. And finally, in London, His Royal Highness, the Duke of Edinburgh, presided over the 2024 Anzac Day commemorations organized by the New Zealand and Australian High Commissions. The commemorations began at dawn, with the Duke attending a service at the New Zealand Memorial at High Park Corner. Thereafter, the Duke attended a service of commemoration and thanksgiving at Westminster Abbey. And there you have it. Thank you all so much for joining me this afternoon. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. I will be back tomorrow on Friday, April 26th with all the latest world news and events. Until then, I sincerely wish each and every one of you a wonderful afternoon. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, comment below, and click on the notification bell so you won't miss a new episode. Okay, again, have a wonderful afternoon, everyone, and I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.